So Apple announces the launch of a chat GPT competitor mm-hmm. called Ajax. And Microsoft pops up, pops on an announcement of a $30 per month subscription AI version of Office 365. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on um, what this means for these two companies and for ChatGPT? It seems like ChatGPT is getting hit from all sides. Pause. Um, (laughs) SEC. Two for two. (laughs) Got to be on your feet. (laughs) Yeah. The SEC has been, you know, investigating them now, and now the public is starting to criticize ChatGPT. They got lawsuits from, you know, different people in Hollywood. Um, they they have competitors, Apple, Meta, Google, even the people that they're in business with is becoming a competitor, Microsoft, um, which is interesting. <sighs> that I've heard that, um, you know, companies stop sharing information with them. Meta and Google, they stopped sharing, you know, data. So it's, you know, kind of hurting their <laughs> their search engines a little bit. Um, so, yeah, you know, when you when you're on top, you get the arrows thrown at you. So let's talk about that one first. What is the future of chat GBT? Because at first it looked like it was unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Now it's looking like I don't know. I actually had an <laughs> issue last week. I tried to use it. And it, it must have been down a server. It wasn't working, so I had to get. A, yeah, I had to get another app. I forgot the name of the uh, other app that is powered by ChatGPT. The uses ChatGPT, but I had to do a whole thing because um, ChatGPT didn't it didn't work for like a whole entire day for me. So, yeah, what's the future for ChatGPT? Um, I think they are still promising, but everyone is catching on. And I kept alluding to. Hey, there's going to be a couple of players that are going to get in this space. And everyone knows Apple and Microsoft are two of my favorites. If you go on careers um, at Apple, they have 104 different job listings for machine learning and AI jobs. So when I start, and that's a tip that I gave before, like if you want to know if a company is really interested in something, look at what they're hiring for. Um, so when you go look at Apple, Microsoft, and Google, as soon as chat GPT started to make their rounds and get really popular, It's kind of like in music, like when a sound gets really popular, every other label tries to find an artist that can do that same thing. I think we are entering like the app store version of AI, where it's like every player has to be in a space. Uh, An analyst, I think four weeks ago, was saying that Apple needs to focus on AI, not VR. And here you are. They had this in the works already. I think um, Microsoft, we talked about it before, but with them and Google, with Google Docs, I think the productivity increases are going to be amazing. Um, but for them to have a third subscription on Office 365 and for anybody that's ever used Excel, just having AI there alone is going to be tremendous. And I don't think ChatGPT will lose their lead per se, but everyone at some point, Meta, mm-hmm. Adobe, uh, Microsoft, Tesla, at some point, everyone will have their own version of this. And um, two years ago, I was talking about the automation and everything. And, you know, Cal Newport was a huge inspiration for like the not having a bunch of meetings and not having answering emails. And now we have a bunch of solutions here now. Every major company is going to have an AI like template because you need it in order for your earnings to be relevant, because if not, it's going to look like you're being left behind the same way. A lot of business owners had to go into creating content. Um they made an incredible adjustment. I think Microsoft probably will monetize the best off of this, but I think Apple will be able to integrate this the best with Siri and a couple other maps and, and other platforms they already have in the App Store. Yeah, I like what you said there about Apple focusing on AR and not VR. One of the things that they did, people probably didn't notice, is right when they announced the, the headset, maybe uh, in June, last mm-hmm. week they said they're cutting back on production before they even came out. Well, yep. that gives you a sign of what they're looking at. But this is what we I said about two weeks ago. Sometimes <laughs> you get out ahead, <laughs> and then for every you reason that I, forever, the, for every reason that you just said, mm-hmm. sometimes people will put you on a mode. Right? You yeah. can create a no, mode, or you can. Hold on, no, no. I got to give you a moment. Yeah. Everyone, please write this down. Troy has been screaming this point, and at some point, we're going to have a person <laughs> on here <laughs> to tell you more. Tell <laughs> them this strategy of letting them be on a moat by themselves first. Right. So when you, when you go out, and I would compare it to a MySpace, it becomes a thing that everybody has to use, right? Mm-hmm. When, when we're talking about social, not even, well, I guess this is the early social media in a sense. 
uh, yeah. place that everybody's putting music, everybody's putting their personal information, and then a Facebook comes, right? And then they take over everything that you've done and they've perfected it. Sometimes you get put on a moat by companies that see your technology and see what you're doing and they've mm -hmm. improved on it. And so when I think about chat GBT, and I, I shared this with y'all a few, few days ago, how do you compete when everybody uses your technology, uses the, the uh, GBT technology? What is your competitive advantage? Especially when some of them are more effective than what you're doing. And so when I think about Bard and I'm thinking about Google, from a search standpoint, their technology can read the entire internet in 13 days. Right? Every 13, it can it source the entire internet, whereas in ChatGPT, it's what's being put, the information that's being put. It, sometimes it comes out correct, sometimes it's inaccurate. How do you tra change those efficiencies? The other part, and the wise man told me this, is that if you want to see what people are doing in AI, look at what the top companies are hiring for and who they're hiring. And so when OpenAI takes off, who, who left OpenAI? Where did they go? Yep. Did they create another company? Where's Bill Gates investing his money? Where's Jeff Bezos investing his money? <laughs> Right. Where's Jensen invested investing his money? Mm -hmm. And so if you start seeing where they're investing and then you see who they're hiring, because that's equally as important, right? Who are they hiring? What are they hiring them for? And what is their skill set? If they start taking the best people from all these places, and especially if they're coming from open AI, because if there's a lot of hires that have come from from that company, they're building the next thing, right? Yeah. And when sometimes they build the next thing, you become obsolete. Now, do I think chat GPT will be obsolete? No. We're not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But competition is here. It's going to be, it's going to be a game-changing competition be, mm -hmm. because of the level of expertise and the professionals that are coming with new ideas, right? And so if, when they look at Silicon Valley, they're looking for fresh minds to come up with ideas. And the thing that they have is the capital. Does OpenAI open have it? Yeah, they have a backing because Microsoft is behind it, but... Can it compete with the Google and the Apple when they come into the space and decide that we're going to be the top players? That's yeah. what we have to see in, in addition to who's hiring and what they're hiring for and where they're taking those hires from. And one thing that they don't have um, that, let's say, Meta has with Instagram, or Shot, you brought this up before. Like, people use chat GPT. Is it like a utility? It's almost like a, a calculator, if you will, but no one loves being on the platform yet. I think a company, if they find a way to make the uni user interface a lot more interactive, fun to be on, and if they get people to be excited to be on it the way that they would a social media app, that is going to have a lasting impact. Um, going back to the motto of like when I look at a company, one of the things that I always look at and see is does this brand have a like a raven or fanatical fan base? Chat GPT doesn't have that yet. Um, if Google is able to find a way to do so, or if Meta is able to do so, and it employs it uh, on that Instagram platform, and it definitely makes some headwinds. But I'm looking to see what Adobe does as well. Google, Cisco. Another one. Yeah, who, who will be a big player. Tesla eventually will have one if Elon can get focused and <laughs> stop worrying about changing the logo on Twitter. Um, and I'm looking to see what some of the media companies like Netflix would do as well um, with an AI version. Uh, yeah. integrate. And, and Bloomberg has launched it. I know everyone who's already worked on the institution, they did have an AI model there, but they like there's a Bloomberg GPT that is running wild now and doing pretty well. Like eventually we're going to see every industry have their own version of one like Shopify and eBay and PayPal mm -hmm. have one for services and then youtube i have one and apple podcast and the spotify I have one like it'll be niche niche down by sector and mm -hmm. that's going to be really interesting to see over the next year or two yeah and that and the everything that you just explained is kind of what's happening right so like we're being privy to what uh the capabilities of chat gpt now but you can imagine 10 years ago that they already had this technology and oh, were yeah. testing it and sourcing it out to be used for the general public and so yeah. if we're 10 behind 10 years behind now that's exactly what these companies have probably been working on for the past three to five years. It's like, what's the next? Because we're going to have our own version of it. And so, again, it comes yeah. back to the, the question of when everybody has a GBT, how do you not compete and what's your competitive advantage? I'm not sure what it is yet. Yeah.
Rashad, what, what about- you think that they're falling off or no? Um, no, I mean, I think that um, I think that is something that competition is good. Um, it has to, you know, spark innovation. Competition mm-hmm. usually sparks innovation, so it's going to be interesting to see. Of course, um, Microsoft has a hand in it, so they don't have like you know a complete. It's not a complete underdog story, mm-hmm. even though, like I said, Microsoft they have a couple other products that they're working on as well. So it'll be interesting to see how much effort they actually put in the Chat GPT or how many how much resources they put in Chat GPT. But I feel like Chat GPT is going to be you know here. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be number one. Um, especially with Apple, that's something that's interesting. I think Apple probably has the, the clear advantage here with, you know, already having the phone. Google has an advantage as well, but even with Google, you'll have to go outside of the ecosystem to get to a Google app where Apple, it'll, I'm sure it'll be embedded in your home screen when you have like, yeah. the I, iPhone and they'll, they'll try to make it, you know, as easy to use as possible. I think that's one of the advantages, though. What do you think? That's what I just said. No, I'm just saying Google's already the search engine on the Apple phone. Yeah, but I'm saying they're going to have an app. It's oh, going to be an okay. app. Same it's, like, it's, oh, it's, it's, app. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, you know, like how they have the stock app, they have the health app, they have the Maps app. Okay. Like Google, there's ways, there's Google Maps, but Apple has an advantage with their GPS system because the app is already on your phone. You have to download Waves. Waves. Yeah. You have to download google maps you don't have to download the the map system that's already provided for you so it's yeah. like you're gonna have to bypass the the recommended chat gbt or whatever they're gonna call it it's gonna be on your phone in my opinion mm-hmm. you're gonna have to bypass the one that's already on your phone go to the app store and you know download it pay the subscription it's gonna be a whole process they probably even put it in for free um yeah so it's like you know that's even more of an incentive. If I can, if I got something for free right there on my phone, I don't have to download it. Why not? You know, they'll probably just you know add it into the monthly bill and you know they get larger data set. That yeah. that 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 strategy works until you know we put that post up about the invisible technology, right? And now it's, there is no phone, and you're just telling it, right? Like that is the GPT. It's a, a small device that attaches to you, and that becomes. The phone and that become there is no app. But where did he used to work for? I know it, but he's not there now. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, so I'm, where did he go? Who is he working for? And who is he hiring? Well, I'm he sure, used to work for I'm, Apple. Yes, I'm yes. sure Apple has. A, I'm sure Apple has their next iteration of the iPhone in a couple of years will be no phone. No phone. Right. Then the apps that's, become. That's where we're headed. Yeah. And even in part of that question, and you, you talked about the office. I mean, this is brilliant. Right, like they they're charging a thirty dollars subscription to that. They have mm-hmm. over four hundred million users on Office three sixty five. Yeah, four hundred million people. Yeah, right? like, I always like to use the ten percent theory. So if ten, even like ten percent of those people say, "All right, we're going to use this technology," we'll pay the thirty dollars a month. People are, I mean, people are paying more a month from everywhere, right? If you look at Netflix, they raise their prices. I saw a Spotify that they raise their prices. Prices are going up on everything, and so inflation, yeah. Yeah, something that's going to be used every day, like Microsoft Office. I mean, you pay that thirty dollars subscription, especially from an enterprise standpoint. Just think about the revenue that gets brought in from that. It's 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 kind of remarkable. Yeah, and if they have the props already in there, where it can like show you how to write a paper on this, research topics on this, this for spreadsheets. Because like I said it before, but we're looking at companies and products that can that can increase the GDP of the country. Mm. This is definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. This gives you a competitive advantage. And I, I've seen some people be like, well, using AI is laziness. I'm like, it's way more efficient. Like, so if I can get 10 times the amount of things done in one day than I used to by using four or five apps, why wouldn't I? But imagine one that is done across an enterprise. So I'm looking to see how like a Dell or HP or a lag or tech company is, is able to use some of the technology to be a lot more efficient. Um, get their costs down, and then as a result, be more profitable. But I think this is definitely a game changer. But I, I keep saying it: the companies, even with that guy who's made that technology, if he gets big enough, Google, Apple, Microsoft, somebody will buy him out and integrate the technology into their their ecosystem. We have to look at these big companies as kingdoms. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. only room enough for a few kingdoms. 
And if you get big enough, they're either going to take you on as competition, put you through litigation, or acquire you. Hopefully, yeah. he, he gets acquired, and then he, he can ride off into the sunset again. But um, we have to look at these companies as what they are. They're actually like kingdoms in terms of the number yeah. of people that they serve. That's the next iteration, right? Yep. So it, it starts from us, well, the creators using it amongst themselves in Silicon Valley, going up to the general public where now companies are investing in it. But I think the, the, the last iteration will be people will have their own personal GBTs. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he was kind of alluded to in that, in that video. And it was like, well, what happens when I just have the one that knows me, right? Yeah. And now it can recommend things for me. It actually knows my schedule and it just can talk to me. I think we're headed toward that in the next five to 10 years where everybody has a personal GBT and it won't just be like, hey, I have to use that one or that one. I have my own. We'll see.